Hey there blues fans, John here with the Blues Guitar Institute and this is your Tuesday Blues lesson number 156. In this lesson we're going to focus on three tips that you can use put into your playing right now to help you craft an amazing blues solo. What we're going to do is go through an example piece and I'll call out each of the three tips as we get to the technique that I'm using. So let's get right to this lesson by having a listen at the example piece. So here we go. This is our example piece that we're going to move through in this lesson. But as I mentioned, the real point is three key takeaways that I want you to have at the end of this lesson. And the very first is a technique that's used heavily in blues, and we're starting out this solo with that technique. And it's call and response. Think of call and response as like asking a question and then getting the answer. And when you take a look at the first few bars, you really get a lot of that. This is definitely kind of an intangible, abstract way of thinking about the guitar and what you're playing, but it will really help you on the fretboard and help you craft an amazing solo if you're using this call and response technique. So let's take a listen to what I mean. I'm doing this over a dead bass in E. This whole thing is a 12 bar blues progression in E. So we're starting out with this E string, the six string pumping, and I'm gonna slide in and set up this nice and simple, really, lick. So I'm just sliding in to the E note on the third string, ninth fret, and then hitting the minor third of E here, this note, and then moving up to the A. So we're going from the E to the G on the second string, that's at the eighth fret, up to the tenth fret, that A note. So that really sets up the call. There's a statement there that's definitely cool and useful all by itself, but it works really well when we answer that. Just like that, we kind of come down and move the melody uh, sort of down from this higher note on the first string as we hammer in from the eighth fret up to the ninth. Just like that. So from a C to a C sharp, and then we land back on that A. Then we walk through those notes, the E, the G, and the A again. So let's take a listen at these two parts played together and really concentrate on that call and response. The fact that the one kind of open up, opens up a statement and then this next little lick fragment kind of finishes it and, and completes the musical idea. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Let's do that again. And we're going to continue the theme of call and response as we just repeat bar one at the third bar's spot. And then we're going to do something a little bit different, a transition from uh, the E into the A. So let me play through the first four bars moving into the top of the fifth bar. One, two, one, two, three, four. we moved right into the A chord in our progression that happens in bar five. And that brings me to the second tip that I want to bring out. We walked into this A chord. And because of that, it really sounded like we meant the way we sort of crafted this little lead line. Because when the chord changed, 
highlighting a very important chord tone. This happens to be the C sharp, which is the major third of an A chord, which I'm kind of fretting here in this um, A7 position here. I've got the open fifth string for our A root, and we've got the flat seven note, the G, right here, and then the major third on the C sharp on the third string, sixth fret, and then on the fifth fret, we're playing the E, which is the fifth degree. So we've got a really cool A7 that sits right here. This is almost like a D shape. You can think of it as one of your first chords just moved up to the fifth fret and then move to the different string set. Okay, so that's what we're doing. And when we get to that chord, it really sounds like we meant it. Listen again as the lead line moves us into this chord. It kind of just falls in place naturally. But I don't want to gloss over what we did to get there. So let's take a look at the end of the E phrase as we walk into this A. So we're still playing in this little territory here for E. And when we set up the call, we still do this. And then we move into this answer. So we do that little E and then the hammer on from the A up to the, from the uh, G up to the A, and then back to the G. Then we're gonna do a super bluesy move here. Reach up with your middle finger, sorry, your ring finger, and hit the ninth fret on the third string, that E note, and then do a slide back to the seventh fret, and then pull off immediately to the fifth, and then down on the seventh fret that A note on the fourth string. And then this is where we use the second tip where we walk into a chord tone. That's the second tip here is we're walking in and you can walk in in a variety of different ways but I find a lot in my playing it happens a lot in blues you do these three note walk ups chromatically so you're just going um, one fret right after another so if you know the note that you want to target you can walk in by starting two frets low that's the note that we targeted in this particular chord change but thinking about this A7 here we could have done it really with any of these chord tones we could have walked in here and we could have done it as we walk in the to the E on the fifth fret second string. All of that works. And in different situations, you'll want to use a different line to walk up. This one on the third string, moving from the B to the C to the C sharp, just works really well in this particular case. So once we get there to move along with our example solo here, we're going to pinch the fifth string because we're now in the fifth string bass because we're playing over the A chord. So that's beat one and then on the end of one, you'll pick that E on the second string fifth fret. And then we're going to go back to the fifth string bass and then the open first string. And we're going to do this cool little run just for a little bit of flash there. We're gonna pull off on the first string from the G at the third fret to the G flat to the open first string. Then we're gonna do that same little move, but we're gonna do it on the second string, starting on the D note. Then we do this super bluesy little move as we reach, and I like to do this with my middle finger, reach to the third fret on the fifth string. Pull it slightly sharp. This is a nice little blues bend, and you can certainly get it snappy with your attack on your fret hand here. So pull, and then hit that A note on the third string, second fret. 
So let's take a listen to this little piece. to the second bar over the A chord there which is just kind of alternating between the A on the first string and then this G on the second string and then we're going to do another walk up technique we're moving back into the E chord in our progression which we can grab an E chord I've just got a little miniature version of it right here an E7 ninth fret, seventh fret, and the ninth fret again, and that's on strings four, three, and two. Really cool way to play an E7. And we can walk into this B note here from this A. So we can go A, B flat, B, and then we're right into our E7. So again, making use of that walk up. Let's play through that so that you can really get a sense of the two walk-ups as they happen into the A and then out of the A and into the E7. Then we're going to do a little chord move. And you don't have to hit that with quite that much attack, but uh, it can sound really cool and SRV-like. In with that thumb crashing down on the sixth string and then we're gonna play a cool little lick one of my favorite places to start any lick or really to hit during a lick train whistle territory here over the E when you play the seventh fret on the first string and this G note we keep coming back to on the second string eighth fret and just push up and at the top of the bend hit the open first string and you hear what gets that train whistle sound but what we're going to do is uh, like I said bend up the top of the bend hit the open first string then shift and it's a great place to shift because you've got that open string ringing you don't need to be attached to the fretboard so lift up your hand pull off on the third fret of the second string to the open and then hit the second fret of the third string and then we're going to hammer on from the open third to the first fret third and then down on the E on the fourth string second fret so that whole sequence sounds like this And then we're going to do another walk up right here as we move into the turnaround and hit the B7 part of this progression. So we're simply walking up from the open fifth string, first fret, uh, fifth string, and then a little B7 shape right here. Pop that, and then we're going to move into a lick. But before we do, let's make sure that we can play everything up until this point because we'll have covered in detail the two, the first two tips. The first one being to utilize call and response and the second one being utilize the chromatic walk up when you're playing and when you're moving through a chord change. So listen out for those two as we get to this B7. All right, here we go. One, two, one, two. Here, we're going to move into the third tip and that is to really pay attention to when you turn up the intensity of the licks that you're playing everyone wants to play fast we want to do a lot of flashy things on the guitar and it has its place but I really want to encourage you and this is the third tip to use some restraint when you're playing and really save some of the guitar pyrotechnics 
for the big moment in the progression. So you start small and you build to it. And so far we've had a couple of little flashy moves, but we haven't been like crazy overt, hit you over the head with it. We've kind of teased a couple of little tiny uh, maybe flashes out. But here, this is a great spot. After we've pumped that B7, this is a great spot to turn up the intensity because in the progression, we're gonna hit the five chord for the very first time the B, or the B7 in this case. And this five chord really feels, in a typical 12 bar blues progression, like the peak, the pinnacle. From there, we start to kind of fall and do a turnaround. But this is the highest chord so far, at least you know, when you compare an E, an A, and a B. Right? So we've got this B7 in this case. It's a big moment, let's treat it that way. And this can be a great spot to let some of that intensity shine through. That's what we're gonna do. So let's have a look at this. So definitely a little bit more going on on the fretboard here. Once we pop that B7, we're gonna move all the way so it helps to choke those out. So deaden the strings with your picking hand where you travel up here to the seventh fret and let that be home base for you. And then start with this leg. So what's happening there is I'm hitting the ninth fret on the first string and then a little trill from the seventh to the eighth and then back to seven. And then move up to this 10th fret, second string, and then back to this B note here on the first string. And then we're gonna pull off to end this from the 10th fret on the second string back down to the seventh. And the cool thing is, once you get that down, once you practice that, we're gonna mirror that exact same sequence of notes, but we're gonna shift it all down into the A7 here. So what we're going to do, instead of popping the B7 at the very beginning of this measure, we're going to pop an A7. And I'll just use this little shape here, where I'm catching the bass on the 5th fret, and then catching that flat 7 note, the G, on the 5th fret, but this on the 4th string, and then that C sharp that we've talked about before in this video. So just kind of pop that. You can use whatever fingering works for you. Sometimes I'll use my thumb over the fretboard. But just make sure you get those three notes in there. And then start that exact same note sequence, but this time using the fifth fret and the seventh fret mostly. So it works really well together. And again, this is we're creating a sense of tension here. creating a sense of tension by stopping the chords, just kind of choking down. And then we shift up here on the fretboard and play this lick, which has got the most flash so far in what we've done. And then we're ready to work ourselves into the turnaround. You can use any standard turnaround there, or you can really continue to turn up the intensity. This is a big moment in the song. We're just using a classic turnaround there, which I've got tabbed out for you if you are a premium member of Blues Guitar Institute. But um, again, use your own turnaround there. If you want to keep the intensity going, it's a great place to do it. So now that we have covered the three tips, let's recap them real quick. The very first thing is to make sure you use call and response, especially if you're stuck and you need a place to start. This is a great way to really build a contour of a melody. Set up the call and then add a response. The second tip is to use the chromatic walk-ins into a chord. It works really well two frets below and then walk up each fret until you get to a chord tone. And if you let your lead lines focus on that chord change, it will really make you sound like you know exactly what you're doing and that you really meant that note as you move into a new chord and highlight the fact that we're in a new chord. And then finally, the third tip is to hold back on the intensity until it 
matters. Don't start out just rushing things right out of the gate. You really want to take your time and build toward the moment. The payoff will be huge. And that's what we're doing here in this little tune. We build rather slowly and then we get to the end and then we really unleash it and we could actually keep going. So let's have a listen one more time, just playing through this whole thing as a cohesive little solo to really let you hear how these concepts, these three tips are really at play. Here we go. One, two, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I hope that you can take these three tips and that they really help you craft your own amazing blues solo. If you want to check out more cool blues lessons, then head over to bluesguitarinstitute.com and sign up and become a free member. Free members get the first 100 tabs for these Tuesday blues lessons absolutely free and there are tons of great lessons already on there. We're up to lesson number 156 right now in the Tuesday Blues lessons. So uh, there's definitely a lot of material out there and I'd love for you to take me up on that and check out some of the free lessons and grab the tab to go along with it so that you can get the most out of it and get some great results. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you here back next week and until then, practice smart and play on.